Lesson 3.5b, Quotients of Rational Numbers. The rules to find the sine of a quotient are the same rules as finding the sine of a product. Unlike signs produce a negative quotient or product, like signs produce a positive quotient or product. And the rules for dividing rational numbers are the same as dividing integers. And remember, we use a negative number to represent a decrease, withdrawal of money from a bank account, or loss. We use a positive number to represent an increase, deposit into a bank account, or gain. So here's our first example. Over four months, Bob wrote four checks for a total of $169 to pay for his cell phone bill. His cell phone bill is the same amount each month. What was the change in Bob's bank account each month to pay his cell phone bill? So we know what we need to find. We need to find the change in his bank account each month. And each month tells us to divide because it gave us four months. We need to find the quotient for the total from his bank account over the number of months. That's going to be negative 169 divided by 4. And the quotient will be negative because of unlike signs. We divide their absolute values. We do 169 divided by 4. And in order to complete this, we need to add a decimal point and some zeros. And remember, the decimal point in the quotient goes straight up. We're going to get $42.25. Now, if you don't remember how to do long division with decimals with adding the zeros, I'm going to have a link to 5th grade math 5.7 that will review it very quickly for you. We know Bob's account changed by negative $42.25 to pay his cell phone bill each month. We can use the information that Bob's checking account changes by $42.25 each month to know how much his account changes annually to pay this bill. So remember, annually means per year. We can multiply a negative $42.25 times 12 months for the year. And the product will be negative because we have factors with unlike signs. We have a negative $42.25 and a positive 12. We multiply their absolute values and we get $517.00. Okay. We know that it's going to be a negative because this was a negative $42.25 times a positive. So Bob's account changes negative $517 per year to pay his cell phone bill. And if you don't remember how to multiply with decimals, I'm going to have a link to 6th grade math 5.3. But just remember, if there are one, two decimal hops in the problem, there's going to be one, two decimal hops in the product. Here it's telling us to find the quotient. We have a negative 86.1, negative 86 and one tenth, and we need to divide it by a negative seven. Well, the quotient will be positive because of like signs. They're both negative. We divide their absolute values. It's how many jumps they are away from zero, so it's going to be positive. We have an 86.1 and a 7. We do 86 and 1 tenth divided by 7. 7 fits into 8 one time. We subtract that 7 times 1 is 7 and get a 1. Now it's the 6's turn to come down. 7 fits into 16 two times. 7 times 2 is 14. We subtract the 14, get a 2. Now it's this 1's turn to drop down. 7 fits into 21 three times. 7 times 3 is 21. We get a zero remainder. The decimal point goes straight up. We get 12 and 3 tenths. And we know it's a positive 12 and 3 tenths. So if you don't remember dividing with decimals, I'm going to have a link to 5th grade math 5.4 for a review in the description. Dave's swimming pool loses 21 hundredths meters of water each week due to evaporation. What is the change in water level per day? Well, there's seven days per week. We need to find the quotient for negative 21 hundredths 
divided by 7 because he's losing 21 hundredths of a meter. And the quotient will be negative because of unlike signs. We do the division and get 3 hundredths. And it's a negative 3 hundredths because of the unlike signs. So the change in water level per day is negative 3 hundredths meters. Here it's telling us to find the quotient. We have a 72 divided by a negative 9. And the quotient will be negative because of unlike signs. And we think, well, 9 times 8 is equal to 72. We know it's a negative. It must be negative 8. Because multiplication is the inverse of division, we can use our knowledge of our math facts to help us go quicker. Again, it's telling us to find the quotient. We have a negative 42 hundredths divided by a negative 7 tenths. And the quotient will be positive because of the like signs. We're going to divide their absolute values, and we get 6 tenths. So remember, when you've got a decimal number on the outside here is the divisor. If we move it over to the right, one hop will be dealing with a whole number, but that means we have to move this decimal over one hop, and then the decimal point goes straight above here, okay? We get a positive six-tenths. Now, if you don't remember how to do this, I'm going to have a link to a sixth grade math video, 5.4b, in the description for you to review really need to know how to do this decimal long division before you go any further in seventh grade. Okay, we're finished with part B. We're going to move on to part C, complex fractions, when the numerator and denominator are fractions. Did you know that a numerator or denominator or even both can be fractions? Have a wonderful day. Join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.